some of the most influential people in the world, some of the most admirable people in the world, are people that basically know what they want, that do what they want, and do what they want well. And the reason why they're so influential and they're so admirable is because the majority of people in the world can't do those things. They can't do what they want, when they want, the way that they want. Because they're restricted to a life where they're basically doing a whole bunch of things that they don't want to do for a whole bunch of reasons that really make no sense. So you have the majority of the population that work at a job that they don't want to be at, so they're not fully engaged, they're not focused, they're not present, they're not doing what they should be doing in life, they're just doing something to pass time or pay bills, and so they're not fully engaged, they're not living to their full potential. While they're in there, in that environment, they're conversing and interacting with people that they really don't like and they don't want to be around. So it's kind of like the majority of people live most of their lives in a false identity. So when we see somebody that's recognized their true identity and is living to that identity and to their full potential every day by doing what they want, when they want, the way that they want, we can't help but admire them. And so the question then becomes, how do these people get to where they are? And my belief is that presence is gold. Presence in life is really where the real gold is. When you are doing something and you are completely aware and completely present and completely engaged and focused in that moment and it's something positive, then that's the gold in life, right? Because you can be focused on getting out of a hostage situation, right? Where your uh, heightened sense of awareness is there and you're paying attention to every little thing that's going on, but that's not a good situation. That's, you know, there are times in our lives where we are present, we are aware and we're focused, but it's because we're in a bad situation and we are basically relying on our survival instincts. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you are truly present and focused on something that has you engaged and 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 it's basically exploiting your passion it's like when your passion is just exuding from you and the problem is that the majority of people in the world are never present right and it's such a shame because we're the most intelligent species on the planet we've been gifted with all kinds of intellect where we we can basically choose how we're going to feel. We can decide how we want to feel, right? A lot of people don't believe that. They believe that external circumstances and society and the world and bad luck and relationships with other people dictate how you feel. And I understand that you go through things in life and you are going to feel a certain way as a result of that, but you have the ability to change that. And most people don't realize that because most people are walking around like robots. They are functioning on a subconscious level. They're just going through the motions and doing what their mind has been programmed to do probably since they're about six years old. And if you don't believe me, then take a minute and go through this exercise. Go through your entire day today and think about from the moment you woke up until this very moment right now at how many times or how many events during that day were you fully present? So let's go straight from the beginning. So you woke up out of bed, you got out of bed, you took a shower, hopefully, and when you were in the shower, what were you thinking about? When you got out of the shower and you sat down and ate breakfast or you got dressed, what were you thinking about? When you commuted to your job or to your place of employment or to whatever it is that you do most of the time during the day, what were you thinking about when you were on your way there? And when you got there, what were you thinking about? The majority of people, when asked that question, can't answer it. They don't know what they were thinking about because they were not present. They were somewhere else. 
yeah, they were in this moment in reality, in physical reality, in real life. Their body was there, but mentally they were somewhere else. They were not present. And so the key is to really start focus on becoming present. Now I know for me personally, I am the most present, the most aware, and the most focused when I'm doing three things. A, cooking, B, listening to music, or C, doing what I'm doing right now, which is taking a message and trying to spread it so that I could try to help other people. Those are the three activities that where I find myself the most present. And if you're not doing any activities where you're not finding yourself present, then you're not living. You, you are doing yourself a tremendous disservice as a human being because you're not utilizing the capabilities that you have. So here's what I need you to do. Tomorrow, when you wake up, start thinking really on a conscious level about what you're thinking about and think about what you're going to do throughout the day and ask yourself how many of the activities that you're going to do are going to be activities where you want to be present, you want to be focused, and you want to be aware. And if you come to the conclusion that you have scheduled your day to do a bunch of crap that isn't going to do any of those things for you, isn't going to make you present, isn't going to make you focused, isn't going to make you aware, and isn't going to ignite some sort of pure joy inside of you, then you need to make a decision to change that. Now, I understand you got to pay the bills. I get that. You know, not everybody can just wake up and say, okay, you know what? I decided today that I want to become a rock star and I want to start living my passion and my life's purpose. So I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to forget about the electric bill. I'm going to forget about the phone bill and the car note. I'm going to not worry about having to feed my kids. I'm going to let the universe take care of that for me. I'm just going to go live my passion. I get it. That's not reality. But if you have a strategy and a plan where you could slowly start spoon feeding yourself that passion and that lifestyle, then you can make that transition over time, right? So I'm not saying you got to go out and quit your job and start doing something that you're fully passionate about and fully aware and fully engaged in today or right now, but you should start training your mind to understand what that feels like because some people haven't done it in so long that they don't even know what it feels like anymore. And that's a shame. Especially since we are a species that's been gifted with these abilities to do these things. So the first thing that I would advise you to do is start to think about how you can become more present in doing things. Think about the activities that really have you fully engaged and make a commitment to do one of those activities every day. And here's what will happen. As time goes on and you do become more present and more aware and more conscious of what's going on, you will begin to develop a plan to get to where you need to be. And ultimately, you will become one of those people that I talked about in the beginning of this video, people that are truly influential and powerful and admirable. And they're admirable because they've figured out what they want to do, they do what they want to do, and they do it very well. If you want to become one of those people, the first thing you need to do is start becoming more present. The first way you can become more present is by identifying the activities or the things that you can be doing that engage your mind in a way where you feel alive, present, focused, aware, engaged, and passionate.